Today, we'll be discussing distribution and service. Distribution assembly and style of service are three different things. When we're talking about distribution, we're talking about the process of getting food from where it was produced to where the customer will be served, which would be called the point of service. So it's physically taking the food from wherever it's being cooked, made, assembled, and then going bring it to the customer. Assembly would be putting the components of a meal together on a plate or tray to be served. So it's taking the mashed potatoes, it's taking the meatloaf, it's taking the roll, and physically putting the components together or assembling them. And then the style of service is how to present the food to the guests. We have different types of table service. One would be American style. This is when food is arranged on plates in the kitchen and then placed in front of each guest. Another style of table service is called family style service. This is when large serving platters and bowls of food are placed on the guest table and they are passed around the table for diners to serve themselves. When you're picturing family style, you can picture Thanksgiving meals like you'll see in movies where everything's in the center of the table and they're passing around the bowl of peas, they're passing around the bowl of mashed potatoes, whatever item it may be, and each diner serves themselves on their own plate. The next one would be English service, which is when the server places food on each guest plate. In English service, the host would be the first one served. For French service, some food is prepared and some is served table side. Banquet service is another style of table service. With this type of service, guests are all seated at tables, for example, at a wedding, and served a preset menu at the same time. In banquet service, servers often put the first course on the tables before the guests come in, then clear that course and serve the main entree next. There are two types of counter service. In a restaurant, when the customer sits at a counter instead of a table would be one example. And when customers order food at a counter or from a touch screen, the customer chooses whether to eat in the food service when seating is available, in which case the food is usually put on a tray or eat elsewhere, in which case the food is placed in a bag. This is especially popular in quick service and fast casual restaurants. Drive through service became very popular during COVID-19 and it's very popular for quick service in some fast casual restaurants. The advantages of a drive through is not having to get out of a car. This is especially important for families that have younger kids in a car and are in a car seat and they don't want to take them out of the vehicle. Or if the weather is bad and once again people don't want to get out of the vehicles, they can go through the drive through because it's more convenient. Another advantage for a drive through would be that it can potentially save time depending on how quickly you can get the customers out of the drive through Disadvantages for a drive through is it requires a lot of space. And it's not just space for the drive through it's space for parking and getting people in the drive through and also allowing customers to park and get out and not have problems with the flow of traffic in the facility. And they also must maintain speedy service. If not, people will complain about the drive through service. Takeout service is when takeout food includes any purchased food not eaten on premises. Guests may order food inside food service or at drive through and eat elsewhere. Takeout service also occurs when the guest orders takeout food at home, at work, or almost anywhere by using a food services app on a mobile phone, ordering on the food services website, or making a phone call directly to the food service. Delivery service would be food services may make its own deliveries or use a delivery company like Grubhub, Uber Eats, DoorDash. We also have Waiter. You want to note that these commissions are paid to these companies or quite high. It's not easy to deliver foods at the right temperature and quality. Depending on how far they have to travel, the quality can quickly diminish. The temperature may become too cold. An example of this would be steam from hot pizza will make the crust soggy unless the box is ventilated and an insulated bag will maintain food temperature and control moisture. You can picture in this example Uber Eats how they have the thermal bags. Whenever we're thinking of like delivery pizza, Domino's, they use the same kind of thermal insulated bags to make sure that the pizza maintains its temperature when they are delivering it. 
For cafeteria service, it is used in many on-site operations, and they may use a mix of self-service and also counter service. They require equipment to keep foods at the right temperatures. Some foods are cooked to order. The scramble system, which is also called a hollow square or food court cafeteria, you can picture the university's cafeteria when you're picturing the scramble system, how they have the salad bar, the soup bar in the center. They have the dessert bar on one side. Beverages are in the center. Then we have like roots. We have the grill. You have the pizza station. That entire setup is a scramble system. And then the kitchen is behind all of that. Self-service is found in cafeterias, buffets, convenience stores, vending machines, and also in micro markets. When you hear the term self-service, it just means that the person who is eating the meal is taking a spoon or a scoop and fixing whatever portion they want onto their plate. For vending machines, there's many types of vending machines, including those that serve sodas and beverages, snacks, cold foods like sandwiches and salads, coffee and other hot beverages. You'll also sometimes find frozen foods like ice cream. If we're talking about hot foods, the safest way to sell them is to make sure they're cold and then have a microwave nearby. There's absolutely no way to maintain the temperature of hot foods in a vending machine. So you'll see them either refrigerated or frozen and then a microwave should be located nearby to those types of vending machines. If a vending contractor is used, the food service must negotiate a favorable contract, including commission rates and how the commission is tracked, the amount of liability insurance required, cleaning and stocking schedule, compliance with regulations, and how quickly common issues such as a broken machine will be resolved. For micro markets, they are small self-service retail stores where customers can choose grab-and-go foods, meals to heat up, snacks and beverages. They are usually paying for these items at a self-checkout kiosk. Because this is all self-checkout, you do have an increased risk for theft, so access should be limited through maybe a badge system or a card in order to get in, and also webcams should be used to monitor the facility. Customers do prefer these over vending machines because they offer more variety and there's an easier way to check out. Tray service is seen in healthcare, hotels, and airlines. It presents concerns because the meals are prepared and assembled at a distance from where they are served. Some healthcare meals are modified to meet dietary requirements, such as low sodium diet for someone with high blood pressure. Each patient resident has a diet order, and some patients or residents are on a modified diet. There's increased pressure to provide high quality meals, increase patient satisfaction with meals, and also contain and reduce food and labor costs, which have been challenges faced by healthcare food service managers. You're usually paying a per person per day rate for meals and staying within that budget can become very difficult while maintaining that high quality meal. Some considerations when designing a tray service system. The number of beds in the hospital, the percentages of beds that are normally occupied, and the average length of stay. How spread out the hospital buildings are, so how vertical is everything laid out, and also how horizontal, which means how many floors the hospital has. The availability of elevators for meal transport is the elevators heavily occupied and you're waiting long periods of time. Type of food service operation, conventional, ready prepared, assembly serve, and commissary. If you remember, conventional is making everything right now, serving it right whenever you're needing it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Ready prepared would be cooking something today that we'll need three days in three days from now. So we'll either blast chill it or blast freeze it and then heat it up the day that we need it. Assembly serve would be purchasing items that are already completely cooked and you're just warming them up and putting them on a tray. And then commissary, you should be thinking of school systems where we have one main kitchen and then we are satelliting or sending it out to the different locations. For physical design of the kitchen, you also have to consider where everything is positioned at the food service budget, which will be a heavy factor, and also your staffing. Do you have enough people to run the kitchen or are you short staffed? So we have three different type of systems used for tray service in hospitals. We have traditional tray line system, a room service program, and also a spoken menu system. The traditional tray line system has a menu that is usually a one or two week selective menu. So this would be a cycle menu. 
Paper menus are given to patients each day to circle their choices for the next day's meals. Then the menus are collected. The menus of patients on modified diets are reviewed. When it is time to assemble meals, the patient menus are given in order to the tray line. Trays are assembled and taken to the patient floors. Usually, food service employees deliver the trays to each patient. Often within 60 minutes of delivery, food service employees pick up trays from patients' rooms and take them to the dish room. The equipment that's used on a tray line would be fiberglass trays and tray dispensers. So the tray is what you're physically carrying the food on. You can picture if you went to public school, the trays that you would carry your food on. If you had those like off-white trays or if you've been to a restaurant like Piccadilly, usually any kind of cafeteria style restaurant will have those trays. And also a steam table, which is shown in this picture on the right. You'll also need a convection plate heater. This will heat up the plate to help maintain the food's temperature since it will be traveling long distances. You need bases and domes, which will once again make sure that the food is kept at the proper temperature. Insulated mugs and bowls. You can also have the heater which will heat up the base and you'll also have a plate heater and it really just keeps that food at the proper temperature. This picture is an air curtain refrigerator and what it does is when the door is open, you can actually leave it open because a horizontal air screen keeps the contents of the refrigerator cold. Essentially, there's this constant flow of air that is blocking the cold air from escaping, which allows you to leave the door open and it just makes it easier for the assembly of the meal. The last thing that's need in a traditional tray line system is the delivery cart. The one shown in this picture is just a traditional delivery cart. It's not heated, it's not cooled. You just load your tray into the cart and then you bring it to the floor that you're needing it. There are other types of delivery carts which can keep food cold, it can keep food hot, and it really just depends on how far of a distance you're traveling on the type of cart that you'll be purchasing. We have centralized meal assembly, which is when assembly takes place in one central location before meals are distributed for service. So if we have a really small hospital that maybe has like 20 beds, you're going to have centralized meal assembly and there's only one kitchen and that one kitchen is serving the entire hospital. We can also have decentralized meal assembly, which is when food is transported in bulk from the production area to a location closer to the point of service where the meal trays will be assembled. So essentially we're having a larger kitchen and we have a almost secondary kitchen where things will be assembled because it's closer to that floor. The satellite or galley kitchen is a kitchen that receives mostly prepared foods from a central kitchen and then meals are assembled and served. Advantages of a centralized meal assembly. Better supervision. If we only have one supervisor and we have the centralized meal assembly, then they can supervise the entire process for the entire hospital. Consistent portions and presentation. Once again, they have supervisors in that kitchen monitoring the portion sizes, monitoring the presentation of it. Less labor will be used because there's only one kitchen. You don't need double the labor to prepare the meals. Less space, you only have one kitchen instead of two or three, so you're not having to use as much kitchen space. Advantages of decentralized meal assembly. Better for serving meals at appropriate temperatures. If we would have a really large hospital that has like 30 floors, give or take, and we have two kitchens, one main kitchen and then one that's on maybe like the 15th floor where they're having the tray line and they're putting everything together, then they can have better temperatures for half the hospital and the other section or the other kitchen would be serving the other half. So the temperatures would be in a more stable and appropriate range long term. It may allow for more attention to each meal. You're not rushing to feed 30 floors in this hospital and you can feed patients in a shorter period of time. Now a disadvantage of decentralized would be less supervision and you also would need more labor because you're going to have the equivalent of two kitchens. 
a potential disadvantage for centralized would be you don't know if your meals would maintain that appropriate temperature for the entire duration of the meal service. For the cook chill system, meals are plated cold on a tray line and then reheated in special equipment just prior to service. In this picture, you see a docking station and cart which reheats this cold plated food. The foods are re-thermalized, which means heated, either in the food service kitchen or transported by carts to the patient floors and re-thermalized there in a docking station. In the tray line system, the advantages are it's precise. Every patient gets a tray. Disadvantages is that it's labor intensive, not very efficient, can only produce two to three trays per minute. If there is a major issue, patients eat late. Patients often forget what they ordered and want something else when the tray arrives. Sometimes the patient hasn't been able to complete a menu and then write ins or another issue. Room service programs. There are steps for room service. The first step is the patient view a menu in their room. Menu is a restaurant style and may include some rotating menu items for lunch, lunch or dinner. The patient uses the room phone to order a meal. Many programs are open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., but there are cutoffs for each meal. Food service employees take menu orders. If the patient is not put in an order by a certain time, food service calls the patient's room or other. An order ticket is printed so the tray can be assembled. Trays are assembled in a mini tray line called a pod. A hospital using pods usually has more than one pod operating at a time. Some hot and cold items are prepared to order. Others are ready to portion. The assembler collects the food items for each tray. The assembler puts the tray into a cart and the runner leaves with the cart at certain time intervals. Maybe it's every six minutes. And then the host hostess on the receiving floor is notified that a cart is coming and they do the tray delivery and pickup. This image is showing you a sample layout of a pod containing too many tray lines. So this is our room service program where we have three people working to serve this facility. We know the meal that we're serving, where it's a restaurant style, so it's a very limited menu and what could potentially be served. In comparison, the traditional tray line needs upwards of nine people to work. So the room service program actually can save a lot of labor costs. Advantages and disadvantages of room service programs. Some advantages would be increased patient satisfaction with meals. They're getting to choose what they're wanting from this menu. Decreased food costs because the kitchen only sends what the patient wants. If they don't want the strawberry cheesecake that we made, and if we were on traditional tray line, we were going to serve it, then they are going to get what they're wanting and we don't have to serve them something that they would throw away. There's more made to order foods and improved freshness, improved nutritional intake by patients. This goes back to them getting food that they actually want and that they like. And then there's no late trays because we're running this every six minutes or every maybe five minutes, whatever time the hospital would allocate. Some disadvantages would be the menu may get boring for patients who are in the hospital for longer periods. If we only have three or four options and in, they're in the hospital for a month, they can get tiresome of eating the same foods over and over again. Moving to a room service requires a lot of work and many months of planning. They're going to need new equipment and employees may have to change their work shifts. A spoken menu system is a variation on room service. Instead of the patient contacting the call center with meal selections, a food service employee called a host or hostess or sometimes a nutrition ambassador goes to the patient's bedside and reviews the food choices with each patient before lunch and before dinner and takes the meal order on a tablet or what does a host or hostess do during the day? The host or hostess will start work in the morning and first help assemble and then deliver breakfast trays. The breakfast order was taken the day before when they take the dinner meal. Then the host or hostess makes rounds to retrieve the finished meal trays and place them in carts to be returned to the main kitchen for cleaning and sanitation. After getting lunch orders from patients, they help assemble and deliver the lunch trays. Next, they retrieve finished lunch trays to be returned to the kitchen. In the afternoon, they will get the dinner and breakfast orders from each patient. Then they will help assemble and deliver the dinner trays. Last, they retrieve finished dinner trays and return them to the kitchen. 
So this job is very monotonous. It's the same thing every single day, which you saw on these two slides is what they do every day of the week that they're working. Advantages of a spoken menu system. It is helpful for patients because they talk to the same employee all day and get to order their meals within a few hours of service. The host or hostess is more accountable for excellent patient service and works well as long as a good ratio of host to hostess to patients is maintained. So about 30 to 40 patients per host or hostess. Assisted living facilities bridges the gap between living independently and living in a nursing home. It is not regulated by the federal government unless the facility accepts Medicaid payments. In most facilities, the food service uses a cycle menu that offers two or more entrees for each meal. The kitchen is often adjacent to the dining room where most residents come for meals. Other eating options like a bistro may also be available in these types of facilities. Long-term skilled nursing facility. They provide health-related care and services needed on a daily basis due to a physical or mental condition such as dementia. Because most skilled nursing facilities accept Medicare and Medicaid payments, they are subject to federal requirements for acceptable quality. They are increasingly focused on upgrading dining and offering more choices of what to eat, when to eat, and where to eat. And many residents eat in a dining room environment that resembles a home dining room, not a restaurant. Each resident is served the foods and beverages he or she desires from the choices available and modified diets are often liberalized. When we're talking about nursing homes, we're talking about individuals who may be 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. So even if they're on a modified diet like cardiac or di diabetic diet, we often liberalize those diets to make them happier during those times of their life.